Hey y'all, Big Wooly here, and welcome back to episode 27 of our FTB Skies Expert Let's Play. So behind me, you're going to notice some things that have changed uh, here down on our Create Island. I have some sifting set up again, and it's, uh, it's going to be fully automated. Right now, I'm just emptying the drawers with our backlog, but in my inventory, I have the ender drawers all paired up for those resources. And uh, yeah, we'll get into all the changes I've made and work on getting just that much closer to the moon today. So without any further ado, let's get into it. <clears throat> Alrighty, so quickly, let's go over those changes here. I'll show you these ender drawers. Uh, we can go over how to store and set the frequencies on these. But as you can see, each of these already has sand, gravel, dirt, and dust in it. And their partners are all over in our resource generation at the main base, also linked to our storage. So we can still access these resources from our storage lectern. But once these drawers are emptied of what's in them that they were going into, we'll replace it with these ender drawers and our sifting setup will get automatically fed by the ender drawers. It's going to be great. Now, we needed to make more power. So as we demonstrated with the mechanical crafters, the force infused biodiesel does what it says it does. Burns longer, generates more stress units. So I was able to get our magnets spinning way faster by just stacking two diesel generators in a row and feeding them both with force. And that gets us a lot more power. We're getting 650 uh, a lightning bolts per tick, which I think is FE. I don't know if it's a one-to-one -one translation. I still haven't found that info anywhere. Um, but that is more than enough for me to power this uh, electric motor. I can actually run it a lot faster, but we don't have any pipes that are really capable of moving items faster, and we don't necessarily need it to be that much faster on the resource generation, because if this is chunk loaded while we're out and about doing things in our world, working around our base, whatever, it's constantly running. And trust me, we're, we're already there. One of the main reasons I kicked it up was we needed more steel, but we don't have, or didn't, I should say, we didn't have any coal. But just in the short time since I got this going in the, wor in the Minecraft world, it's probably only been 30 minutes to an hour of it running. I have 320 coal already in my system and it's going to continue to come in every single time we process some gravel. So that is the off camera work that got done in between that uh, I needed to catch you guys up on. Oh, and we're automatically making the force, we're moving it, the biodiesel with fluid transfer nodes like I talked about. So just like we did with our water for the latex thing right here, our biodiesel uh, setup is spitting biodiesel into this transfer node, which is sending it here to the second ther thermopneumatic processing plant we made. That's piping out into a buffer tank here of force infused biodiesel, which feeds our setup for pressure, but it's also going into its own fluid transfer node, which is sending it back over here to our power gen setup. It's actually feeding right into this fluid tank and feeding this. So as you can see, we're getting quite the buffer of force infused biodiesel, 32 buckets there. The buffer on the fluid transfer nodes is actually 64 buckets. So we have 72 plus this. So we're almost to the point where our whole system will start to back up. And then once it does this side over here, will back up and quit burning through so much uh, seeds and ever burning air and sugar and it will fill here and then once this gets full 64 buckets of uh biodiesel and another 32 in there the system will shut off and we have a pretty decent stockpile of force infused biodiesel to run our base off of so you're like that's cool Wooly. you just spent the first four minutes telling us what you did in between episodes hey Listen, y'all, that in between episode stuff, it takes takes a lot of time. And I'm pretty darn proud. It took me it took me longer than it should have to get all this working how I wanted it, but it's working. So you'll you'll listen and you'll like it. 
No, I'm just kidding. Thanks for listening, though. And hopefully it helps some of you guys in your worlds. Now, let's see. What else do I want to get into today? What does Wooly actually have planned? We're definitely going to work on getting into this dissolution chamber because that's really the the, on, the the next step. Sure, I can take biodiesel and combine it with liquefied source to make our fuel bucket. That's two seconds in a fluid mixer. Almost something not worth showing you guys on camera because it's, it's, it's a process we've done. You just you take it and you put it in the fluid mixer and it spits out the fuel. So when we get to that point, we will be seconds away. And as of right now, actually... We don't have backed up enough biodiesel from moving our generation setup over to the force infuse, so we really need to wait that out to get it backed up so that we have enough for it. So I'm gonna grab all of the things that we need for our dissolution chamber, and I will meet you guys over on the main island. All right, here's one other thing I wanted to cover with you. I was just looking through the quest book, you know, to see if there's tips, tricks, uh, shortcuts that I was missing, and there's one that I wish I had seen 20 episodes ago or more. So, there is a task under Gadgets and Gizmos, if you come in here, that says 10,000 buckets of lava. And that seems like a lot, which kind of is. However, if I had set up just our drip farm 20 episodes ago, we would probably already be there. And what it gives us is pretty priceless. It gives us a creative fluid tank with infinite lava in it. And the transfer rate on it is ridiculous too. So it can pump out the lava about as fast as you can make something to take it out. So I took our existing lava set up here and I'm just going to have it passively dump into this. We have 32 buckets of lava sitting right here for things that we may need lava for in the meantime. And this is going to continue to run the whole time we're playing. And when we get there and get our infinite lava tank, I will let you guys know. I may work on some more dripstone and stuff to expand and speed up the little drip lava setup we've got going right here. But I really, really wish I had done this just forever ago because it's just been sitting here doing nothing because we haven't really used any of the lava. But... This, an infinite source of lava will open all sorts of doors for various other progressions. So we're gonna leave that sitting right here. You just take a task screen, which we made a long time ago, uh, and you pick the 10,000 buckets of lava quest, hit your little check mark, and then you pipe into it like it's a tank. And this gauge will start to fill up as we get closer and closer. So we'll do some periodic check-ins on how we're doing on our infinite lava source over the next few episodes. All right, let's take a look here at the dissolution chamber and see what all it requires. Aluminum gear. I don't know that we've made an aluminum gear yet, but it is the same as all the others. You can make it in your mechanical crafters, your press, or as we're doing in our multi-servo press. So I've already made that off camera. And everything else is stuff we've done. The only process we haven't done on camera is this one. And quite frankly, it's because I don't like this the, the like repetitive uh, crafting from create, it's it's sort of a pain. And I can buy these from wandering traders. So when I'm just piddling about doing stuff in between, every time I see a wandering trader, I check with my Invar coins. And if he's got them, I buy the three that he'll sell me. And so far that's done us well enough. If we get to the point where we need a bunch of them, I guess we'll have to automate it and we'll talk about it then. Uh, LDPE sheets, we've seen all that, so let's make our dissolution chamber. Dissolution chamber. This is what's going to allow us to make this simple machine frame. This is the next uh, piece that we're going to need to be able to craft stuff for our rockets and spaceships and whatnot. We need one of these to be able to get into miniaturized crafting and they use miniaturized crafting in this pack for us to make our rocket, I believe. Um, let's see, field projector creates a scanning field where it can be placed in the middle. And then if we come look at our tier four rocket, it says it needs to be done in a NASA workbench, but I seem to recall there being something about that that is different that we're gonna need. Uh, so we'll get there, but I do know we need it because it's right here uh, in and it's blocking the progression for our oxygen loader, which um, can be made with dash or can be made in miniaturization crafting here. Um, 
So, yeah. There we go. All right. So, next on the list is the simple machine frames. Machine frames can be upgraded even more with Duraplast sheets and latex. Creating simple machine frames is your next step. So, we're going to need some more Duraplast sheets, which I don't necessarily know if we have any Duraplast. Nope. So we're going to have to make some more phenolic resin, which is just uh, the molten silver and ethanol and a fluid mixer with um, latex. So give me a minute to get some of that together and make some more of those sheets we've made before. And we will move on with making our simple machine frame in the dissolution chamber. It looks like everything else in here is stuff we've already made. Okay, here we are. So I decided to set the dissolution chamber right on top of our fluid drawer where we're storing our latex from the fluid extractor. Because then, if you come right here to your fluid input, I'm able to just tell it to pull the latex we need for the simple machine frames straight from the bottom. And then if we need to empty it, I can tell it to push and it'll push that fluid back into the dedicated fluid drawer down beneath the dissolution chamber. So works out nice and clean for us and uh, then I just took a GPS data card, got it some power, and now we're ready to go. So for the simple machine frame, these are typically shapeless. I'm not sure if they have changed that in here, but it, it used to, you had to, back in the day, you had to make them like in the right order and everything, but they have since done away with that. And then if we just put in our ingredients we've discussed, it's gonna go ahead and craft our next simple machine frame for us. There are speed upgrades and things that can be put in here. Uh, we will get into those a little later. I think we've gotten some for free, so if I find some in storage, I will uh, pop in and you know let you guys know about those. So that completes our quest here, and then there is an industrial foregoing quest line, and it looks like no rewards for that on either of them, and that's gonna get us to our next uh, steps of progression in both of these quest lines. Which leads us to our NASA workbench, which we're gonna have to make some additional assembly machine parts, some more finished PCBs, uh, redstone engineering blocks. Okay, so everything there you've seen me make. So I'll get those pieces together for us for our NASA workbench. Let's go take a look over here at our field projector. So our field projector is for miniaturization crafting and we're gonna need to make two pieces, the dish which is springaline glass panes. That's probably the only one we haven't done together. And it is sort of a, a process. We're gonna have to make burnt glass with a infuser over fire element. And then we're gonna have to take that burnt glass and combine it with springaline shards to get us to springaline glass. And then panes, if you wanna make panes are the standard pain recipe. So we're gonna need six of the springaline glass just to make one set of 16 panes. So that is uh, something that I will go ahead and go through. We've gone over how to infuse the items, so I don't think I really need to show you the burnt glass, but um, if that's something you need to see, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll do a short on, hey, this is how you make some burnt glass. And then for the base, the base is stuff that we've all already made together. So let me go get all the pieces together. We'll craft these up uh, together and move right along well y'all we're back and that took way 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 longer than i expected but we should have everything we need to make our miniaturized crafting setup and to make our nasa workbench so the two pieces for the miniaturized crafting are done over here in our mechanical crafters uh bear with me i don't know these recipes so we'll go back and forth a little while i get everything into the crafter so for the projector, we need the three glass panes, three steel ingots, an eye of ender, and two hardened glass. Okay. So let's see. We draw a bow with the uh, this. Okay. The eye of ender goes in the middle. And then it was the hardened glass. Ta -da! Okay, one down, one to go. Uh, let's see. I think I need four of these things, which is an oversight on my part. So I won't make you guys watch while I make four of them. 
Uh, how did it go? I didn't forgot. Uh, okay, one of those, one of those, one of these. Two mana diamonds. Uh, pneumatic cylinder and a redstone torch. Pneumatic cylinder, redstone torch. Wow, that thing was huge. Okay, and then we combine these. Awesome. Now I just have to do that three more times. So I will take care of that off camera in between our next set of clips. Let's go over here and make our NASA workbench. It was a royal pain, finishing a bunch of PCBs, more heavy engineering blocks, and more simple machine frames. So there we have it, the NASA workbench. This is cool this is where we normally build our rockets i'm not sure if that is still how the mechanic is done i remember reading in the forum something about it being done in compact crafting but we shall see so let me go ahead and make up three more of these field projectors and we'll proceed on all right y'all we're back i think it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode today because i'm spent about an hour and a half trying to figure out what this block is and i think i just figured it out but when i mouse over it i get no tool tip and uh then i went looking in the ftb uh discord and i see a lot of people t talking about needing space plating blocks which is what i do believe that is but i don't see it listed in the you know ji when you mouse over it but sure enough that's what it looks like right there so we have ourselves another one of these situations where we're going to need to set up a repeated craft provide it with a lot of polyethylene and have it run through on loops uh, which i will do with belts like you guys have seen me do before so i'm going to get that set up but it is going to need to be in between episodes uh today's going to be a little bit of a short one uh, i i just time life happened i haven't had a chance to uh, get through the content and there has been a lot of just shuffling the base and getting stuff together so this will come out before the stream so if you guys watch this uh we stream at 7 p.m mountain time on friday evenings that's myself and crypto tito we won't be playing in this world we play in uh currently we're in all the mods nine so if you guys haven't checked out that stream series, uh, we've been doing that since uh, New Year's Eve. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We just, we hang out, we play Minecraft, so come join us. But uh, thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. Sorry, sorry that it was a short episode, but uh, we're gonna work through the space plating and getting that stuff built. I'm gonna also simultaneously try to get more power because uh, I had some power issues. I ended up moving things around. So yeah, we're gonna work on getting more of those redstone blocks. All right, so while I was editing, I'm gonna insert this before the end, but while I was editing, I uh, spotted that we could go ahead and go to the next tier of magnet, which uh, should generate us even more electricity off of our same setup. And all that is is some overcharged electrum, which we've made before. It's just electrum, which is silver and gold in the arc furnace. Uh, and then you, smelt the two to one together in the induction smelter so we're only going to get 10 out of this uh these materials but we will have almost a whole ring of the next tier of magnets if it is all done before i'm done with the edit i might even throw in how much we get Alrighty, so i may have misread the quest line a little uh, or not quest line the recipe a little we had enough it took it takes four overcharged electrum uh, per magnet segment upgrade so we ended up getting five instead of the ten i thought but we did get our whole second ring completed out of redstone and it puts us at 890 i'm hoping those lightning bolts are a one-to-one -one conversion to fe i honestly don't know but 890 power doohickeys per tick on our generator and just to show you everything is fully backed up i have 
everything backed all the way up through vegetable oil, so everything's just kind of stopped running for now, which is great. Means that this can stay running all the time, constantly sifting resources. Uh, we need to make some more mana steel mesh, so we're going to get into that uh, to get some the more materials. There's seven total slots here because I had made a list of seven of the resources that I wanted being sifted at all times. And we're going to have to do something about rate of items, too. We need to be able to get them out of here and into the drawers quicker. So that is some stuff to look forward to next time. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.